Hey there, Writer Rebels. One of the things that makes a story great is how it's told. So join me today while we pick the right POV for your story, rock your readers, and have them coming back for more. <music> Greetings, everyone. My name is Scarlett Cole, and welcome to my channel. If you've never been here before, thanks for giving me a chance. And if you are a subscriber or have watched some of my other videos, welcome back. This week, we're going to be talking about choosing the right POV or point of view for your story. I thought this would be a good topic to start the beginning of July because July is Camp NaNoWriMo. If you've never heard of NaNoWriMo, that stands for National Novel Writing Month. Typically, NaNoWriMo or National Novel Writing Month occurs in November, to which you try to write 50,000 words within a month. That has now expanded into Camp NaNoWriMo, which occurs in both April and July, but you get the luxury of picking your own word goal so you can go way over the 50,000 or under the 50,000 if that's something a little bit more manageable for you. Since this is a writing challenge, I figured that maybe I should start with a video on writing craft. And one of the things that is very important when you are telling your story is how are you going to tell it? Who is going to be your point of view characters? And in which point of view are you going to tell that story? Depending on the decisions you make for point of view can make or break how your story is received or how your story progresses as you're writing it. However, you're very lucky that there's only a few choices which we will go through in detail in the video and spending a little bit of time up front can make sure that you completely ace it. Point of view, however, is a dual pronged decision. It's not only the point of view of which you are going to tell your story, but also the characters in which you are going to choose your, to tell your story through. I'm going to talk about each of these in detail separately. So here we go. When we talk about point of view, there's mainly three points of view that are most commonly used within fiction writing. And that is first person, third person, close or limited, and third person omniscient. So to get started, let's talk about the first one, and that is first person. So first person is used a lot in young adult. I see it a lot in romance, but it can basically be used in any genre, just like any of the other points of view. What's characteristic of first person is that it is using the pronouns I or we. So for instance, if you are writing something in first person, you might say, I went to the store, I bought a bag of chips, I got $5 change, I walked out the door. We had a great time. Basically, what it's trying to do is it's trying to force you into that character's head and point of view. So you are interacting with the story as if you are that character. If you think of it in terms of like a first person video game, when you are playing video games like that, you are pretending to be that character. So when you are writing in first person, the author is trying to get you to pretend to be that character. You get to see what the character thinks, how they process information, and how they view the world. So not surprising, there are both positives and negatives to using first person point of view. When you are using first person point of view, you are have a very intimate connection with the characters. Not surprising, it's used a lot in young adult because those stories have a very character driven focus and are usually relatively fast paced. So it's very easy for the author to put you into that character's brain and that you could relate to them very, very easily. This is also extremely useful when you have characters that are very quirky or have an interesting way of speaking as you are seeing everything through their eyes and visualizing everything the way that they would say it, the way they would see it, and you can very easily connect with that character. One that does an excellent job of this is The Collector by Victoria Scott. It is a first person romance paranormal story that is featuring a character that is very snarky and has a very different way of talking and thinking, especially since he is a soul collector from hell. So he definitely is a little bit different than your average person. So you connect very well with that character. You can really think through the things that he's thinking through and it works very well for that kind of story. However, as much as you want people to connect with your characters, it's also kind of difficult to write sometimes because you can only show what the character sees, thinks, or feels. Therefore, you are very limited in terms of how you could write a setting or if there's something else going on somewhere else 
or if you want to show more of the world than what the actual character is seeing. You have to be able to maneuver around those obstacles as an author because you are limited in certain things and knowing certain things that are happening at the same time in a different place. You are also at the disadvantage of having to write the thoughts and feelings of other characters that you can't interact with because you're only being able to see it through that character's point of view. This does help in terms of showing and not telling, but it is sometimes really difficult to be able to portray emotions and thoughts from characters outside of your main point of view character. And it's something you definitely need to consider before you jump into first person. Some people find first person very natural to write in because it is very almost autobiographical in the sense that you can just talk your way through it. However, a lot of people really struggle with it because of the limited amount of details that you're allowed to include and the restrictions of showing other characters and other parts of the world and other grander types of plotting and world building. This leads us into our second point of view option, which is third person limited or close. A lot of people use limited or close interchangeably, so I'm probably gonna flip back and forth as I discuss it. Third person limited or close is very similar to first person in that it is limited to one particular character, but it is written in third person. And what I mean by that is that you are using pronouns and proper nouns to describe your characters. The pronouns you are using are she, him, they, them, etc. So when we use our other example, we could say instead of I went to the store and got a bag of chips, it would be Becky went to the store and bought a bag of chips. She got $5 changed, they had a wonderful party. So you are using those pronouns, as I said, and the proper noun or Becky's name to describe that actual character. A good example of this would be the Harry Potter books. They are written in third person, but it is very clear that you are in Harry's limited point of view. Everything you see is how Harry experiences it. If something is happening in another room, you don't get to see that unless she's actually switched into another character, which like all the options I'm going to present today can be used for multiple characters. However, when you are in limited ones like first person and in third person limited or close, you are restricted to that one particular character in that scene. You want to avoid something called head hopping, which is jumping between characters within a particular scene as a reader finds it very difficult to stay grounded with that character. And if you are using that point of view to establish a connection between your reader and your character, by head hopping, you're basically just working against yourself. So what are some good points about using third person limited? Well, using third person limited still has that intimacy like first person, but you are using third person language. So you do have a little bit more flexibility in the world in terms of showing some more detail than you would in first person, but it is a little more removed from a first person character. You can still get tone and voice and all of that stuff through your third person limited but it is going to be a little less immediate than essentially being the character like in first person. Some of the drawbacks to using third person limited, of course, is because it is limited. So you are going to have to maneuver around some of the same obstacles that you would have had in your first person story. The nice thing about third person though, is it is a little bit easier to transition between characters. When you are using first person it can be quite jarring because you are staying in first person for that particular character. And if you are switching to, let's say third person with a different scene, or you're jumping to another first person character, you need to be very deliberate with that. And it needs to be very obvious that you are switching characters considering you're not actually going to use proper names. So you need to know when one character is speaking versus another character if those characters are different. So it's a wonderful thing in first person because you get to develop those voices and make sure that they are unique, but it is a bit of a challenge. Whereas in third person limited, when you are switching between characters, it's a little bit easier to be able to tell the reader and ground them in the scene because you can use their proper name to be able to show them who is speaking and who is now uh, in control of the scene. And now we move on to our third POV and that is 
third person omniscient. When I was in school, we called it the God POV because you're looking at everything from the top down, kind of like a God would look over their world or a fly or a bird, however you want to look at it. This can be a really great POV because it allows you to see so much more of the world in a really quick amount of time. If something is happening in another land or another room, you can talk about that. You can switch between characters a little bit easier. The other things about that is because you were talking about it from like a God or narrator perspective, your narrator can have their own voice. The narrator can be a character in itself. Whereas in a first person story, you can't have that greater narration going on because you are stuck in the character's point of view. Also in limited point of view, you have that same restriction. However, if you are telling the story from third person omniscient, you are telling the story outside of the character's heads. So you have a lot more flexibility to show more of the world, to help with some of the world building and to be able to show characters doing different things in different places a whole lot simpler than you can with your more limited points of view. So what are some of the benefits? Obviously you can show more details. It can be a little bit more simple in terms of world building because you can show more of the world to the reader and you don't have to struggle as much as an author to have that character experience that world or see certain things in that world. You can talk about it outside of the character's heads and be able to build that up. A good example of third person omniscient is the Tolkien novels. He is using a third person omniscient voice so he can show the world of Mordor and flip between various lands and types of characters. This works very well in stories like epic fantasy because there is a lot of world building and can be a large cast of characters. So you can definitely use that to your advantage. The other nice thing about it is that you can keep information from your characters. So it creates a certain tension where the audience knows what's going to happen or they can foreshadow things that are going to be coming forward that the character is completely ignorant about. So that's going to create some tension as your reader is already at this point and your character isn't and being able to watch that progression as they get closer to that betrayal or secret or danger or whatever the case may be in your story. When you're looking in a limited perspective, you can't really do that. You can have people conceal information because you can only see things through the character's point of view. But the problem is, is the reader can't see that information ahead of your main character. They will experience it along with their character, which can make for a fantastic surprise when it does happen, that betrayal or secret or danger, but it doesn't allow for the amount of tension as that builds up because the reader doesn't know what's coming. Obviously, the negatives of this are probably going to be the flip of the limited perspectives. Essentially, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for getting the readers to connect with your characters because you aren't as intimate with the character's thoughts and feelings like you are in first person or third person limited. You have to work a little bit harder to get readers to connect. Obviously, this is probably going to be a little bit more successful when you are using a plot driven story as opposed to a character driven story or a larger ensemble cast or bigger world. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to though, when in terms of Game of Thrones, we do have multiple cast members, but we are using a limited perspective in each chapter where we're only following one character. So it can be done and it can be done in various different genres and various different ways which leads us to the question of, so which POV should I choose? Well, there's a few things you need to take into consideration. The number one is your genre. Essentially, if you read widely within your genre, which is something that they very much recommend when you are writing, that you read widely within the area of which you are writing books, that you will see there are definite trends to which POVs are being used. I've used the young adult example. A lot of young adult fiction is written in first person. 
not every young adult book is written in first person and there are lots of examples of third person limited close and there are examples of third person omniscient as well just like any other genre so don't feel that you are completely restricted by your genre but it's definitely something to consider because readers who read a lot within that genre are probably going to have expectations as to what kind of point of view those stories are written in like I said, you can make whatever decisions you want as an author, but it's something that you should really, really consider before deciding if this is the POV you want to use because you are probably going against some reader expectations. And the second thing is whether you have a character driven or a plot driven story. I've kind of brought this up a couple of times in my example, so I won't talk about it for too long, but essentially if you have a very character driven story, you're probably going to want a closer or the limited point of view so that you can have that connection with your characters. If you have more of a plot driven story that's going to be in a larger type of world, there's going to be more world building, then you might want to lean more to an omniscient or third person limited close type of POV because that's going to allow you to tell your story a little bit better and provide more details than more of a character driven type of plot. Again, you can use anything in either case, but some of them are going to be a little bit better served if you are using the proper POV for that type of story. The third thing you should definitely consider is what kind and how many characters that you have that are going to be main point of view characters. So if you do have only one or two main characters that are going to drive the story, then you can probably get away with using first person a lot easier. If you have a lot of characters out there and you're flipping between, let's say, seven characters and you're using first person, it can be done, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to be flipping between this voice and this voice and this voice and trying to make sure that they are all completely unique. The beautiful thing about that is you can make them very, very unique because they are so close um, to that actual character. So done well, it can be great for multiple character stories, but if you are maybe just starting out or not totally comfortable that you can make seven extremely unique voices, then you might be better off using something that's more omniscient or more third person that gives you a little bit more flexibility to switch between multiple characters. The other thing to consider too is what kind of personality types do you have for these characters? So do you have an unlikable hero or heroine? If that is the case, then you might want to lean more towards first person because it allows you to provide more detail to the reader about how that person thinks and it can help create empathy for that character. That way the reader can connect more with that character even if they are a little bit more on the unlikable side. If you have a character that is unlikable and doesn't have the most redeeming qualities, which would definitely be a challenge to write on its own, then maybe you don't want to be right in their head because it's going to give the wrong impression to the reader and it's going to make it harder for the reader to connect with them because of the way they think and the way that they um, move through space and process information by not being in their head would be able to give you the distance between the reader and the character that you might need to keep them flipping pages. And the final thing to consider is what are you most comfortable with? One of the best ways to figure out your POV if it doesn't already lean in a particular way would be to write the first scene or any scene that you want to in each of the different POVs or the ones that you are considering. Anything that's going to flow better is probably going to read better. And if it's going to read better, then it's going to be easier for the reader to connect to your story, to understand what you're saying and to process that information. Plus, if you are writing in a POV that you're not comfortable with, you are probably going to end up giving up on the project because you are going to frustrate yourself. If you are not very good at maneuvering around those details and you write bigger stories, you might be more comfortable with a more omniscient type of POV. However, if you are very into the characters, you're very thinky and you really like to display your characters that way and it just flows almost like an extension of yourself, then first person might be exactly what you need to do. And you aren't restricted to one POV for your entire career. Each story can be written differently. You can change it up and use a different POV if that's what the story leans to, regardless of what you wrote in your last book or what you plan to write into your next book. 
obviously some readers might get an expectation of what you kind of write and how you kind of write, but each story can lean itself to something completely different. So just because you are comfortable with writing first person, maybe this story needs to be in third person limited or third person omniscient because that's how the story needs to be told. So I would definitely take a few minutes to try and write some of that scene, whether it be a page, two pages in the POVs that you are considering to make sure that you are making that right choice and something that you are going to be comfortable completing before you start into your project. So now that you've chosen the point of view to tell your story, the other consideration is which characters are going to be in that point of view. This may seem like a strange question, but the fact is whoever you choose to tell your story is going to basically create the story that you're going to tell. For instance, if you read Twilight back in the day, you may have noticed there was a manuscript for a book called Midnight Sun. I read the first several chapters that were on Stephanie Meyer's website when I was in the whole reading the Twilight craze, and she has now since published the full manuscript for Midnight Sun. If you don't know what the difference is on this one, Twilight is written from the point of view of Bella, and Midnight Sun is written from the point of view of Edward. They're both using first person point of view. However, they're telling the same story from two different character perspectives. The interesting thing about that is that each character is going to think differently, experience the world differently, and tell the story differently. For instance, Bella is a high school senior. She is going to experience high school for the first time. There's going to be some first love aspects of that. She is going to be a little bit more naive in the world as opposed to maybe an adult character or somebody with a little bit more life experience. On the flip side, when you're looking at Edward, who is a vampire of several hundred years of age, who has been going to high school a lot. Um, he has probably experienced that high school experience 50, 60 times at this point. So he is going to see that experience very differently than Bella who is experiencing it for the first time. He has probably met so many more people in his life. He has more world experience. He's probably traveled a lot more. So his perspective on the world is going to be different. He's also an immortal. So there are definite biases to some of his thoughts and feelings as he is going to view life completely different as his will last eternally, whereas Bella is looking at a limited time frame on Earth. So when they're writing these books and telling that same story, they are going to tell it very differently. And essentially, these books are going to be different. So that's why we can publish two books of the same story because they are different stories because they are told by different characters, even though the plot events stay exactly the same. This is definitely something you will want to consider when you are choosing a character to write your story. If you are writing from a hero's perspective, obviously it's going to be that hero's story. However, if you decide to flip the script and write from the villain's perspective, you can write that same story but as the villain, that's going to have a different feel. The reader is going to experience it differently and you are going to have a different vibe to that story. So one of the things you will definitely need to consider before you start is what kind of story do you want to put out in the world? Do you want to have that hero's story? Do you want to have that villain story? Even though you are telling the same thing, you can have the same ending. What perspective main character you look at for telling that tale is going to impact your book and how it's received. If it's not a story you want to put out in the world, then that's probably not the character you should have leading the charge. For instance, if you like the anti-hero villain story, then maybe you should write it from that perspective as opposed to trying to write it from the hero's perspective because that happens to be more common. You need to think of how that's going to be perceived in the world and what story it is that you want to write. However, there can also be the situation where you have more than one voice that's kind of niggling around in your head. The hero and villain example, maybe you need to write both. Maybe it will provide value to the story where you are adding a second voice and a different perspective so you can allow the reader to bounce back and forth or see things from both sides of the coin. This can be particularly good in stories that have very gray moral boundaries. So if you're experiencing it from the hero's perspective and the villain's perspective, 
it may be kind of cloudy which one is the hero and which one is the villain so as you go back and forth you're forcing that reader to see things very differently if you had told that same story from the hero's perspective they're going to be rooting for that person and they're going to be assuming that this is the right thing that needs to happen. If you go from the villain's perspective, they might see them as the hero and think that the villain's choices are right and this is what they need to do. Or they might see them as the villain that they are and see that this is all negative and still rooting for the hero. When you're going back and forth, this can cloud things up and make it a little bit more tense and dramatic for your readers. So these are things you can definitely consider to enhance your plotting and enhance your character development by choosing which characters are going to be your main focus and which ones you are actually going to give a voice to in your story. But just because you want to add additional characters doesn't mean that you should. However, even if you aren't comfortable writing additional characters doesn't mean you shouldn't either. Some of the things you should consider before choosing to add additional voices into your story are one, what kind of details can this additional voice add that I can't convey through my original main character? If you are just adding it to add fluff or dimension that you don't really need to, then that voice probably shouldn't be there. Secondly, it does it feel natural for that voice to be in there or does it feel forced? If you are basically jamming that other voice in there just because you want to tell that story, then it can be very jarring for the reader and you don't really want that to happen. If you really, really like that voice, then maybe they're the ones that need to be the main character and you need to cut the main character's voice. This is something you will need to consider, hopefully before you get too far into your story. And the third thing that you wanna consider is by adding this additional voice, is it going to distract too much from my original main character? If you are taking away too much from your main character, then it might not provide any additional value for you and this character might basically just get in the way. I'm sure people have read a lot of books where you have these scene stealing characters who are just super interesting and super fantastic, but if you are using them as a point of view character, it can really distract from the story that you are trying to tell. If you'd like some more information on considering different things for dual POV, I did make a video about that already. So uh, you can check those out so I don't have to get too much into those weeds on the various things you need to consider. But if you are struggling with who the main character should be or who the main characters should be, you can go back to that same exercise that we had with choosing a type of POV in that you would write a scene from either character's perspective and figure out which ones make the most sense to you and are going to tell the story that you want to tell in the way that you want to tell it. At the end of the day, if the story is going to flow well and isn't going to be with too much detail and it's something passionate and from your heart, it's going to engage your readers more. By having more engaged readers, you are going to have people that are going to keep coming back book after book after book, which is exactly what you want to do. So a lot of this may come natural to you. You may come up with the story or you write in a particular POV most of the time and you know exactly what you want to do from the outset. But taking a couple of minutes to evaluate those choices and make sure that you are making the right decisions before you start are going to be extremely valuable for you at first off confirming that you've made the right decision once you're halfway through a book and you're getting frustrated and making sure that you make that right decision even though it's not necessarily what you would normally do or giving you the chance of checking out other options and making your story that much better. A few extra minutes of thinking can help you with a lot of stress and frustration, plus it can take your book from fine to fabulous. All right, so that's all I've got on POV today. If you enjoyed this content and you learned something, make sure that you are giving it a thumbs up to let YouTube know that we love this video and we'd like more people to watch it. If you are not a subscriber, but you did want to hear more content from me, make sure you're hitting that red subscribe bar and the notification bell below the video, and it'll let you know every time I have a new video up. Typically I release on Thursdays, but I do put out an additional vlog or extra content on occasion. If you are participating in Camp NaNoWriMo, I would love to know what you're working on if you want to include that in the comments. And as always, if you have any questions or suggestions on things you would like to see on this channel, make sure you're including it in the comments and I will get to those when I can. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and write all the words and I will see you next Thursday.